okay? So the z-score 1.325 is halfway between 2.31 and 2.34, okay? So with respect to our parameters, okay, the z-score that we require is 1. Point, okay? Sorry, this is actually 2.31 plus 2.34 is 4.65. So actually this value is 2.325 and not 2.65 here. 2.31 plus 2.34 is 4.65. Okay, let me just rewrite that here. That's 4.65. So the Z score that we require is 2.325. 2.325. Which in some cases is reported as 2.33, okay? So for a 98% confidence interval, the Z-score that's reported is typically 2.33. So now we have all of our parameters, so now we can actually substitute them into our formula to calculate this 98% confidence interval. So let's have a look at that in a little bit more detail. So what we're going to do now <coughs> is we're going to construct our 98% confidence interval. So when we construct our 98% confidence interval, okay, the formula that we're going to require, so for our confidence, for our confidence interval, for our confidence interval, the formula that we require is x bar minus z times sigma over the square root of n is less than the population mean, which must be less than x bar plus z of sigma over the square root of, of n. Okay, so substituting in our values, x bar is 495, so this becomes uh, 495 minus the z score, which we identified to be 2.325, so minus 2.325 times the population standard deviation, which is 7, okay, and that needs to be divided by the square root of the sample size, which is the square root of 24. So this value must be less than the population mean which must be less than x bar, which is 495, plus 2.325 times 7 over the square root of the sample size, which is 24. Okay, so now this is just arithmetic, so we can actually do our calculations. Let's calculate this term here first of all, the z times sigma over the square root of n, which is the same as this term on the right-hand side, which is z times sigma over the square root of n. So let's do that calculation. So it's 2.325 times 7, the numerator first. That gives us a value of 16.275. So this becomes 495 minus 16.275 divided by the square root of 24 must be less than mu, which must be less than 495 plus 16.275 over the square root of 24. Let's do the division. I'm going to divide 16.275. It's divided by the square root of 24. It gives us a value of approximately 3.322. So this becomes 495 minus 3 point, let's just say 3, 2 to two decimal places. It must be less than mu, which must be less than 495, plus 3.32. Okay, so let's do the subtraction. So we have 495 minus 3.32, gives us a value of 491.68, must be less than mu which must be less than 498.32. So what we've constructed effectively here is based off our sample evidence is a lower bound and an upper bound. Now based off the theory what we now know is this is that this interval was constructed based off 2.325 standard units on either side of of on either side of, of, of the mean with respect to, I suppose, the standard error for this particular distribution. So what we have is that we're 98% confident that the true population mean is greater than 491.68 mils and less than 498.32 mils. Once again, from an interval perspective, from an interval, okay, from the interval perspective, we're really saying is this is that the lower bound is 491.68 and the upper bound is 498.32 and what we're really saying is that we're 98% confident 98% confident that the true population mean okay 
that the true mean, the true population mean, true true mu, the true mean will reside between those two values. Okay, but let's be careful because we might be wrong, and it is still possible that the true population mean is outside of this value and outside of this value over here, but it should only be outside of these values. Okay, on either side, approximately two percent of the time. Okay. So what we've just constructed is a 98% confidence interval. Okay. Now, just because this video is a part of a series of videos, okay, uh, on confidence intervals, uh, we've already constructed a a 95% confidence interval. We've also constructed a 98% confidence interval. Okay. Uh, so let's have a look at the overall, I suppose, let's have a look at the overall uh, relationship between these intervals. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look at the relationship, the relationship between our 90% our 95% and our 98% uh, confidence intervals. I'll just say CI for that. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build a an interval. Okay. An interval that goes out to positive infinity and negative infinity. Okay. Now, with respect to the 95%, sorry, to, with respect to the 90% confidence interval that we calculated, okay, uh, we found that the 90% confidence interval, okay, that the lower bound of the 90% confidence interval was 492, okay, so for it was 492, 492.65, uh, and the upper bound. Uh, was reported to be 497.35. So with respect to this interval here of le this length, we were 90% confident. Okay. Now let's have a look at the 95% interval. Okay. So the 95% interval that we constructed, okay, uh, the lower bound was 492.2. Okay. So it was 492. 0.2, and the upper bound of this particular interval, okay, the upper bound of the interval was 497, 497.8. So in relation to this interval, okay, we were 95% confident. And our final interval, which was our 98% interval that we calculated in this particular in this particular video, the lower bound was 4 was 491. 491.68 and the upper bound okay the upper bound was 498.32 okay which are values bigger than these and less than them ones so this particular interval here okay okay is our 98 percent confidence interval so that interval here is the 90 percent one this interval here is the 95 percent one now, hopefully we can see an unusual relationship here. Okay. Okay. The more confident okay, we want to be with respect to where the population, the true population mean resides, the more confidence that we want to have, okay, we can see that it has a quite a wide range of range. Okay. The lower bound or the distance between the lower bound and the upper bound is this distance here. We're very confident, we're 98% confident that's within that range, okay? Now, when we reduce the confidence level, we can actually see that what happens is that we're zoning in closer to where the actual population mean would reside. So the intervals are getting smaller, okay? So this is one of the relationships, this is the trade-off, yeah, that we have to make, okay? The more confident that we want to be with respect to where something resides, okay? the less certain we are of actually where it actually resides. Okay? But we're more confident that it is between these two points, but it's a bigger distance with respect to where it could reside. Okay? As we reduce our confidence, okay, we're more certain with respect to where it resides. And as we reduce our confidence even more, the, the, the region where we expect it to reside actually becomes smaller. Okay? 
And this is an important relationship okay, uh, between the confidence level okay, and actually the interval okay, that's produced from that particular confidence level. For the 98% confidence level, that's a high level of confidence, the interval is wide. For a, 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 for a confidence level uh, less, than, less than the 98%, the interval is narrower. And for the, the least amount of confidence in this case here, 90%, the interval is even shorter again. Okay. So uh, hopefully this particular video, uh, which was the culmination of three videos uh, in this particular series dealing with confidence intervals, uh, hopefully this particular video uh, was somewhat helpful uh, and informative. And once again, guys, uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Thank you.